This program is proudly brought to you by Telecom Limited and Daytech. Papua New Guinea's cost of living crisis continues to escalate, with families battling to make ends meet, navigating the tough economic climate with the rise in the prices of goods and services severely impacting families, inflation being the primary economic indicator to measure the prices of goods and services, has been a topical issue in the media and in Parliament which has prompted a question without notice from the regional member for East Sepik Island Bird, who showcased basic household consumables for average and low income earning Papua New Guineans and their corresponding increase in price. Prime Minister, also American Treasurer. Uh, Prime Minister, you are all you're very well aware of the hardships faced by our people uh, due to the cost of living crisis. Now, I just wanted to demonstrate that in 2019, uh, when we came into government and when you were installed as Prime Minister, Papua New Guineans, the lowest income earners, were earning 3 kina 50 an hour, and that equates to 28 kina per day. Even now, five years later, our lowest income earners are making 28 kina per day. This tin of fish, which most Papua New Guineans eat every day, low income earners, used to cost 5 kina 50 in 2019. This morning, it's 7 kina 50 in Port Mosby. In other parts of the country, it's more than 7 kina 50. This packet of rice used to cost 4 kina 50. Today it's 6 kina in Port Mosby and in other parts of Papua New Guinea, in ECP, it's up around 7 kina. This packet of noodles used to be 80 toya. It's now 1 kina 20. Some parts it's a kina 50. This packet of biscuits used to be 80 toya. It's now 1 kina 20 in Port Mosby. This constitutes what most Papua New Guineans eat at dinner time. If you add this up, if they have two meals a day, it's already more than the 28 kina that the low income Papua New Guineans, our people, are making. All market mama, only sit down over the day, low table market blow, just to get enough money to buy these very basic items. My questions are as follows. Number one, what fiscal initiatives has the government undertaken in the last five years to make these items affordable for our people? What initiatives you play in Kissing Penis Land? If not, what new initiatives do you have that will make these items affordable? Lol Mama Blayumi Sahatok, Lo Table Market every day, Nolin Ablo Baimna, Fidim, Olpini Blol, our future. If you have no immediate plans, or if you do have plans, could you tell our hardworking mothers sitting on the table market when you expect, is it end of this year, next year, or the year after, when do you expect that these items will be affordable for our hardworking mothers and our low income earners? In response, Prime Minister Marape mentioned that his government is cognizant of the hardships faced by Papua New Guineans. 
Mikili was saying one plus price from Biscay to Guarta, Mikili. But when you look at the aggregate figure of inflation to the economy, that's the long term running average. It's a long term running average. And I'll come straight to the point. We have not been incognizant to the fact that it is tough times out there. What can we do when COVID 19 shut down the global economy that created and exacerbated double digit inflation elsewhere? You look at Argentina, for instance, 200% inflation. That's a case in point. So we, we, we are not imbeciles running the economy on this side. Some of us are not businessmen. We graduated through the hard school of hard knocks to be here so we understand exactly what is the pain of the little men on the streets. He further highlighted the interventions by the Marapa Rosso government to alleviate the cost of living pressures. Well, whilst the actual cost has increased, and I, I, I want to admit here that we have an issue with the price control element, and we have already passed instruction for a review, and the Minister, uh, Minister the Honorable Joseph Lelang, under his words, we're looking at the price control in a specific manner. But coming to the point, what have we done the last five years to assist our people? Well, assist him or legally man marry, me like talk with him. Because talk English here, you may confess him or man marry to us. A lot of time you make a Facebook talk English now. Plenty no clear. Last five years, me plus have some hard time. Now me plus increasing. For instance, effort long of Papua New Guineans paying school fee blow, beginning blow. You clear time 2020, COVID 19 come now, me plus rouse him, project fee away. So no longer today, Papua New Guinean parents are paying project fee. No longer paying project fee, one term tuition fee. Me also trauma go inside. Long halving below school, including higher education loan program will give him more halving. On top of Hekas and Tessas, where Somali government start him, me blow trauma this law go inside. Long help him and relieve him better than Papua New Guineans. You know, it, me blow rouse him. Takis, long over 50,000 small toilets of our economy, they're earning under 20,000 kina. No government before us has lifted the non tax bank threshold to 20,000. The last was 12,500. The last was 12,500 when the O'Neill government lifted from then 7,500 around that benchmark to 12,500. We've lifted it to 17,500 once, we tested that. The burden on our people was still more with now entrance that those who earn under 20,000, and guess what? Those who earn under 20,000 are those who go to the shop and buy trukai, buy the biscuit, buy the tin fish. With the varying degrees of inflation figures from different factions of our society, it poses a big question, which is are the recent inflation figures for Papua New Guinea reflecting the changes in the prices of goods and services? Good night, Papua New Guinea. I'm Malcolm Waira, and welcome to another episode of In Focus. In this session, we are joined by Dr. Thomas Wangi, a senior research fellow from the Sustainable Land Development Research Program at the National Research Institute. We discuss his latest spotlight paper, Are the recent inflation figures for Papua New Guinea reflecting the changes in the prices of goods and services? Dr. Wangi, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on this program, Malcolm. Firstly, Dr. Wangi, what are the key points this paper seeks to highlight? In this uh, particular paper, I was highlighting some of these uh, obvious numbers of inflation, uh, which is, of course, the rise in the price of goods and services. The obvious numbers were lower than expected, uh, meaning that uh, the pressure on the ground or the evidence on the ground suggests that inflation pressure is high, but the, the obvious numbers uh, seem to be lower than expected. Now, how has inflation become such a major concern for Papua New Guineans? Inflation is a very important uh, macroeconomic indicator because it directly affects the purchasing power of the kina. It means amount of goods and services that we can buy with the kina, uh, it affects directly. So where there's inflation, uh, that as far as the consumers are concerned, we have to pay more to buy a good or a service, or if we are to buy less, that means uh, with the same amount we can also buy less. So that's from the perspective of the consumers. Uh, but to the business, it's also a cost uh, to 
uh, business, so it's like uh, operational cost goes up, and it also affects business. So it is a cost to both the consumers and business, and even, even to the government as well. So that's why it is important that we need to understand what inflation is all about. Now, based on your research, what are the latest inflation figures? Uh, the inflation figures in the recent years. The recent years, it is a time when the inflation pressure is very high in this country. So the recent years, when I'm talking about recent years, it's from uh, 2000 all the way to the current. So those are recent years. So from 2000 up until uh, current, uh, there were some major uh, global events. So one of that is the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, the other one is the war in the Ukraine. And uh, of course, uh, last year up until now, it's on the domestic front, it's the reform in the exchange rate. So those are the factors that actually contribute towards inflation. When you look at the recent numbers, we're expecting those uh, numbers there to be actually high around this time. But then the current numbers, when you look at the annual numbers, the annual numbers are averaging around 5% over that particular period of time. And even when you look at the quarterly numbers, where inflation is regular on a quarterly basis, so quarterly numbers, uh, they are like a very small, uh, between minus one and around three. And uh, in the last recent quarters, which was last year December and uh, 2022, uh, December quarter and last year March quarter, uh, there were some negative numbers recorded. So negative numbers means that the inflation pressure has come down, meaning that the price of goods and services has come down. But in fact, it's not. So that's what the concern is. Now I understand there are two levels of inflation core inflation and headline inflation. How do you differentiate them and which is the more relevant based on the findings of your report? I think the headline inflation, it is the very relevant one uh, to the country and most of the uh, inflation numbers that are re reported is the headline inflation because headline inflation is just the total inflation in the country. Whereas the core, it excludes uh, some of the volatilities in particular items like uh, food and fuel. So they exclude them. So. When talking about the inflation, it is better to look at the uh, headline inflation, which is total in the country. Thank you, Dr. Wangi. We now go for a quick break. Join us on the other side for more discussions. Welcome back to In Focus. Still with me in the studio is Dr. Thomas Wangi. Now, Dr. Wangi, can you give us a sense of the quarterly and headline inflation in Papua New Guinea? Uh, those are actually the numbers that NSO records uh, every quarter or every year. So in the case of the recent years, uh, we have uh, seen uh, these uh, numbers, uh, official numbers being recorded. And uh, for quarterly numbers, uh, the numbers were uh, ranging between minus uh, one and the uh, plus three percent. So that means inflation was around uh, that, that range. Uh, but uh, the concern uh, in this are the negative numbers. So negative numbers that were recorded during that period when the inflation pressure is already high. So when the pressure is high, we expect the positive numbers, or not the negative numbers. But negative numbers indicating that inflation actually come down. So that's the way the concern is. So our inflation numbers should be positive. Uh, annual numbers. In terms of the magnitude, it was just average around 5%. Except for last year, there was a drop from about 5.3% down to 2.3%. Uh, but when you look at all these numbers, there was no spike or there was no sharp increase during that particular period. It was all averaged at around 5%. So that's where the concern is. So when the press is always, uh, when the press is high in any country, there's always a spike, meaning that there's always a big increase. And then it's actually uh, being stabilized at some point. But in the case of PNG, it's never been like that. So that's where the concern is coming from. Why are inflation numbers so low? I think the inflation numbers uh, can be low for uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, from the paper, from the study, I actually highlighted that uh, one of the factors why inflation number could be low is because of the wage. Wage is like a portion of the spending uh, that on a particular good or service. So like for food, uh, for example, for food, the portion of spending is higher than the other items because food is uh, something that we buy uh, like every day because we need, to, we need to eat food in order to survive. So the weight is more uh, towards food than the other items in the basket. So when, it was, uh, when the weights were actually determined back in uh, 2009 and 10, that's almost 14 years ago during the income and household expenditure survey then. So 
when you look at that particular uh, period of time, it is like a consumption pattern, the income, everything has changed much over these 14 years. So which I think that the outdated wage, which are already in the system, uh, can affect the uh, CPA calculations. That's one. The other two is the, the baskets that we have. So in the CPI, we have 12 baskets. So all the goods and services that we consume, they actually put them into 12 baskets. And in those baskets, they have their own weights and the items in the baskets, the items. And those 300 and 300 items, they actually divided into 12 baskets. So in those 12 baskets, those items, they have their own weights. So meaning that, uh, uh, meaning that over this uh, 14 year period, so the consumption pattern is already changed. So some of the items that are in the basket need also to be reviewed so that uh, some of the baskets, maybe we, like items can be outdated so they're no longer relevant to current situation. So that's number two. Three is the uh, sampling. Sampling is the process where the NSL go and collects uh, price from the outlets. So over the years, uh, the sampling dimensions may have also changed the 14 year period. So there are a lot of good, uh, goods and services available. The outlets have also expanded the number of households in urban towns they've expanded, towns they've expanded as well. So the sampling procedure need to be reviewed because uh, need to look at because it could be one of the factors contributing to these uh, low numbers. Uh, last, uh, which I thought is important because uh, it can come from the human error. So human error means when someone go and collects a price on a day or on a week or in a week or so, on, they're likely to make mistakes because they're human beings. So for example, like when you look at the tin fish, someone go and collect a price of tin fish in a shop, and by the time he or she goes into the shop, and if the tin fish is not there, he or she is likely to record the price change as zero. In fact, the price change is not zero, it is something. But because it's not there, they're uh, recorded as a zero. And that zero can affect uh, the entire weights uh, because it's an average weight in the CPI, so it can really affect. So these are the possible reasons uh, can contribute to low inflation uh, numbers in our country. Now, what recommendations are you proposing in the paper to improve the accuracy and the re reliability of inflation figures? I think uh, there are several ways we have to look at or for NSO, NSO or National Statistical Office to consider. Number one is we need to conduct a new household income and expenditure survey. So that survey is now 14 years old. So it, there is a need for a new survey. So once we have a new survey, the weights can be updated, the baskets can be updated, so some of the issues around there can be fixed. That's number one. Two, the sampling procedure, how we go about collecting the data that also need to be reviewed. Look at it and look at it and which other areas need to be improved, which other towns need to be included. Right now we have only eight towns in the sampling uh, procedure. So we need to expand to other towns. We need to expand to mining towns so that we capture as much as we can so that uh, our inflation numbers could be really reflective of what is in the country. So that's, and number three is uh, we need to, or NSO actually need to train its staff who are on the ground. The officials on the ground, they actually do the data collection. They need to be probably trained so that whatever they're doing is really reflective of the numbers. So they need to be trained so they can do the right thing. So those are the possible uh, suggestions that I feel uh, could improve the official numbers published by National Statistical Office. Finally, Dr. Wangi, what is your opinion of the future of inflation in PNG? Uh, the inflation is a very concerning issue because it affects all of us, one way or the other. Whether it's you, are, you are in the village or you're in the town or whether it's a business, it affects everybody else. And uh, my advice, uh, my, think, uh, my, my last comment is that inflation is here to stay for an indefinite uh, time, for an indefinite period, meaning that one cause of the inflation is the war in uh, Ukraine. That war, we don't know when it will end. So that means inflation will last here for some time. The other reason is because the, the reform in our exchange rate here in Papua New Guinea, this reform will continue for some time, uh, some time up until 2026. So that you can see that inflation will be here for sometimes so we have to really prepare for that that's number one secondly is uh, in any country or in the case of png as well when the price goes up price never comes down it won't reverse that quickly except those uh, 
uh, uh, items that price control items like fuel and so on, the price may come down, but for other food items or so on, the price goes up and it never reverses. So that's another thing that we have to be mindful of. So while we are thinking about inflation, I think we need to really uh, be capable about our own family budget, household budget, uh, budgets, to ensure that uh, we are within the inflation, to we are ensure that we are ready for inflation, and then if in the case of any inflation that comes up in the future as well, we are ready for it. Dr. Thomas Wangi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Well, viewers, that ends this episode of In Focus. Do join us again next week, Monday, for another episode. Till then, bye for now. This program was proudly brought to you by Telecom Limited and Daytech.